Hi, my name's Ellie Greeny, and I'm the Commercial Director at Transition Partners. We're a tech recruitment consultancy with an office in Leeds covering the UK market and an office based in Berlin. I've worked within tech for the past five years and find the market fascinating. I'm really passionate about helping women not only get in tech, but really advance their career with an exciting industry that can provide endless opportunities. I love networking and finding out about other people's stories. I decided to set up the journey of a woman in tech to share knowledge, wisdom, and hopefully have a laugh along the way. Feel free to get in touch on LinkedIn to see how you can get involved. I hope you enjoy the podcast. everyone and welcome to the journey of a woman in tech. So this week I have a fantastic guest. It's Rachel Skelton. I've known Rachel for over two years now. She's a software team lead at Conveyor Digital based in Halifax. Rachel is so generous with her time. She runs Leeds Front End Meetup along with her good friend Naomi Sharif. She's passionate about tech culture and being an active advocate for diversity and inclusion. She's a Code First Girls instructor. She runs a blog called Tech Ray, and she's also the award winner of One to Watch 2020 at Leeds Digital Festival. She's done all of these great accomplishments before the age of 27. She's 26 years old. She's pretty impressive. And she is, I mean, we're a huge fan of her at Transition Partners. So I can't wait to hear your story today. Hi, Rach. Hello. Oh, wow. What an intro. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> well, well, you know that. it's pretty bloody awesome 26 you I mean I've I've known you a couple of years now and it's just yeah. been a pleasure to watch you grow and develop and really flourish like I want, to, I want to say the same about you guys as well like I love your journey I absolutely love it I think it's fab and I'm really glad to be such a part of it you know doing your events and and coming on the podcast thank you for having me <laughs> I feel like we're girl funding each other here like it's good to have Always. cheerleaders isn't it for each other oh, like yeah. every, time, or every time you do something cool on LinkedIn it like touches my heart a little bit and I'm like yes girl <laughs> that's the same with me when I saw you on uh, doing the AI North thing I was like oh my gosh look at that and a cool photo as well this is so cool <laughs> I just um, love seeing people win and succeed like on LinkedIn on Twitter or whatever I'm just like I might not even know people I'm like you go <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah, me too like I I mean a lot of people think that online can be really negative but everything I see when it's I, I try and just like ignore the negativity like yeah. zone that out <laughs> yeah and, stuff it just makes me genuinely happy like a lot of I thought about time like time and time again about coming off offline a few times yeah. you know when you're struggling a bit and I thought oh, gosh, I'll suck it off. <laughs> yeah but then you see something and you think oh if you focus on the good things there are so many positive things going on and particularly in our community right the tech yes. community is tight knit and absolutely there's amazing inspirational people I feel like a lot of the time my friends down south are really jealous the ones that work in tech and they're like oh my god it looks so cool I'm not <laughs> Really that's so true yeah so when I when we did the Christmas party for all the meetups uh that me and Nat and Crispin organized and all mm. the meetups came um oh yeah my, I couldn't make that one I was gutted I know, I know sad times but um, my partner came and he's uh he works in law and he was like we did, we did slideshow karaoke and he was like everyone's so supportive of everyone in this industry does everyone know each other I'm like well everyone has links I know some people but genuinely I just think we're really lucky to be yeah to have such a great community I guess that's why I love doing the you know running the meetup because you know you see these people oh before COVID but you see these people yeah. and you have these conversations and you you might not know them face to face but like oh I've seen those stuff online and I just think you're awesome and yeah you feel like you know everyone don't you I've met people before and I've never it's the first time I've met them I'm talking like I've known them for years yeah yeah because <laughs> I've been exactly. stalking them that's what it is <laughs> yeah. but maybe, I know. Maybe that's the recruiter in me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's kick off then with an introduction into your current role and what you're up to at Conveyor Digital. Cool. Well, so I'm a software engineer at Conveyor Digital, as you have already mentioned. I am. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I work in a team with some fab people, um, and we work on all sorts uh, in JavaScript, and uh, we're working on some artificial intelligence stuff, which is fab. But I also um, I also manage a, a team of apprentices, grads, and interns as well. And honestly, it's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Like I don't just manage them. I see myself as like I mentor them as well. We have different sessions, um, work on the personal development because that's a huge part 
passion of mine and just um, guide them through their education. I feel like very close to kind of what they're doing because they're doing Amazing. an like apprenticeship and they're at uni um, and it's like, well, I went to uni, I, you know, I did that stuff. Um, mm. This is what I've learned. <laughs> Do you feel like you know all the all the struggles that they're going through and you've been there before and come out the other way? I mean, it's Absolutely. pretty impressive the opportunity that you've got at Cavea and how well you've adapted to that. And also you play a really big part in the culture at Cavea, don't you? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So um I follow Paul Pilling's lead, who's absolutely fantastic. And he's like, Yeah, we love Paul. We do. <laughs> he's the I love Paul. Kid. Do you know what? I've been, I've had a few like bad things happen lately, like just bad instances of luck oh, and things wow. like that in life. And uh, Paul just sent me the sweetest message yesterday. And I was just oh. like, oh, I love Paul Pilling. He's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> he truly, honestly, he's just he's fantastic. He's one of the best managers and mentors that I've ever had alongside Mick um they're just fantastic I can't even well, let's keep going and then when he listens to this podcast we can make him cry <laughs> yeah but like, oh, please shut up stop talking about me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah so tell me more about then the culture and your role within that because that's cool yeah so well it's all kind of stuff alongside my day job at the moment um it's like pushing for different things you know we do public speaking workshops at Kavea uh, with the L&D team and then we, we try to find um, different opportunities to, to push people to speak if they want to obviously we're not just pushing them off the edge of a cliff um, and we have like we've re since I started we restarted the lunch and learns which are really important especially as a culture across you know across teams and, and things like that that's been fantastic really and I think that. all those little things as well as your day job has really helped boost your confidence isn't it since you've joined the business I think you've changed a lot like this like you're so much more confident than you were when I first met you which I love the past year I have grown so much like so much compared to maybe a couple of years before or whatever I have learned so much coming to Korea I can't even thank them enough for hearing me or oh, you guys <laughs> I don't mean to just like shout at you know how great everything is um, but they have been <laughs> <laughs> it's nice though isn't it because you were brought on obviously I remember when 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 we helped get you the job so it was Nick that brought you on who's been on the Let's Talk Leadership podcast before and he's a good friend of ours at Transition Partners yeah yeah fantastic such a good he's been he mentored me when I started um and managed me and I just I've learned so much about leadership from Mick um yeah. And Paul, so I'm just really thankful. So after I got the role where I was, where I started managing the apprentices and the grads, I was like, right, now I have this. I don't actually have that experience because this is my first line management job. What can I do next? So how can I get the experience um, alongside actually managing them and gain experience there? But they were like, well, we have some opportunities. We have uh, apprenticeship levy why don't you look at apprenticeship? And um, an opportunity came along to do the ILM level three uh, team management and leadership apprenticeship. Oh. Oh, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? So actually I'm a bit of an apprentice at the moment doing a leadership yeah. apprentice. So, oh, and cool. that's that's all through Covea and Calsdale College, which is like so, so good. It's quite, it's quite challenging yeah. doing work like school work education work alongside your day job being a developer alongside managing people alongside doing all the other cool culture stuff yeah. um i really enjoy it i'm just really passionate about it leadership personal development managing people so good how big's your team um so the team i manage there is um five not including myself so there's, there's five apprentices grads and interns and they're all Awesome. Not all of them are doing separate things, but there's three different pathways there. So they're all on different journeys um, and different like courses and things like that. I feel like it's so great as well. Like managing a team is great and you get a lot back from that. But managing a team of people that you're helping give the opportunity to take a big step in their career is awesome. So that's really cool. That sounds like it's a really good fun role. So good for you. Now, I'd love to delve into your background your journey how did you get into tech and how did you get to where you are today okay so when I was like 15 <laughs> I've spoken about this a bunch of times recently so I know the story off by heart even though it is my story and I have lived through it um, so when I was 15 I I was really passionate about music and I wanted to build a website because I used to sing so mm -hmm. I went to build a website for my passion project no idea where to start now 
I'm like, what, 26 now. So when, when I was 15, there was no accessible tools. There wasn't any Wix, I don't think. Nothing I could do like that. So my granddad, um, he was trying to teach me SEO and HTML. And um, I, it just went over my head completely. I had no idea. Was he, was he technical then? Was he a developer? No, my granddad wasn't a developer. But I think he, is in like adver- he was in advertising. So mm. he kind of, he knew the whole, um, the non-technical ways um but he he does a lot of like i know right he does he did a lot of e-commerce stuff as well so he kind of had that knowledge um so yeah i just had no idea what he was talking about if i'm honest and i didn't know what to do at college or after school and i didn't really get along with where i went to school so i went to college and i was like oh it software development and it was a b test i was like you know what this course is going to help me build my website um and I was just like, I'm going to do it. So I did do it. <laughs> I ended up loving it. I really loved it, um, which was like a bit of a surprise. I was just like, oh. And so I'm where was that then? Where did you go to college? I went to college uh, in York, so York College. Okay. And you did a yeah. BTEC? Yeah, I did Fantastic. B-tech. So that taught you, taught you all the basic principles? All the basics, yeah. Um, I absolutely loved it. And I kind of got pushed a bit to go to university from the college because I was only, I was one of three girls in the in the whole course at college um and the rest were guys um so it was just like you know you're 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 a girl go to university because it's a great opportunity um we don't have many you know girls on on any of the courses blah 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 um sounds a bit like a tick box exercise if you ask me but it was a really good decision <laughs> well it was it, it, Imagine it? Did it. yeah did the other girls carry on um one of them went to university uh, to do a computing related course and the other one um I think she just went into work but I don't know if it was computing related okay yeah um so yeah I went to university after that so I did um a computing course at Leeds Beckett so I ended up so because I'm from Leeds well I'm not from Leeds I'm from York but I ended up staying in Leeds and Leeds is like my hometown now so mm-hmm. went to university and didn't leave <laughs> I think that tends <laughs> to be the case right <laughs> yeah yeah um, and how did you find the course at uni uh, it was tough, like it started on a high because I'd just come from uh, college and it was great, blah, blah, blah. And then uni life really set in. And you know, the uni stories like, oh, too much partying, blah, blah, blah. I ended <laughs> up failing. Well, I ended up failing one of my years because I was, um, I got depression and oh, I was just like, yeah, it was really tough. But um, I reset the course. That's hard to get out of a rut, right? When you, when you feel like that and when you, yeah. when you, it must have failed it to get back up again must have been really hard it was tough it was like the only way I'm going to do this is reset this year this one module there's only one module that failed um reset this module move out of the way of any kind of uni life party and anything like that um and just a knuckle down and that's what I did I ended up getting like a first in that one module um which was like cyber security and it wasn't my strong point at the time um oh. But after that, I got, I got, ended up doing really well because I was just like, right, fresh start, um, that one module. So that was good. Um, but after that, I mean, the uni course was, was good. Again, I was only one of three girls. Um, the other, how, how many? How many were on the course? Oh, I, I don't know how many were on the course, but I do. they had multiple classes. So they had like two or three classes at once in different, in different things. So it was mm. fair, a fair few. And you could imagine like filling a whole lecture hall and that's where you see are there any girls here? Oh, I can see another two. Okay, great. So I had- <laughs> You make really good friends with them? Um, they weren't in my class, actually. Oh. So I know, I saw them in the lecture hall. So I was the only girl in my class, um, yeah. which is tough, you know, it is really tough. And it's, it's, it's a learning experience, I think, working with- It's just nice to have people to relate to, right? That are going yeah. through the same personal experiences. And yeah. It's tough, isn't it, when you- when when you're the only one it's not easy is it so you graduate uni you got for it sounds like but bloody hard and you did really well to pull yourself back up when you'd had some difficult times so well done to you and you graduate what did you graduate with uh i graduated with a 2-1 good last so, good stuff yeah. and then where did you go from there 
Um, I got my first developer job at a junior developer role at um, a small telecoms company who have been bought out since. Um, it was only like 15 of us. So I was a junior. My senior was the head of IT. So he like did everything IT. So I stayed there about a year. And when I felt like I'd, I'd learned what I could from him, um, I also got really close to our marketing people. So um, both of our, uh, the marketing manager and assistant, I got really close to them. We did some really cool things like go to different conferences. Um, it was just really, it was just a really good experience, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I went, I actually left coding and I uh, went into an application support and deployment engineer role. Okay. <laughs> what made you do that? Why did you, why did you leave hands-on developing? I just wasn't sure. I was just like, I don't know, like I'd come to the end of maybe what I could learn from my boss and he was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I was just like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. Um, kind of in a stuck in the mud situation. So I was like, oh, I saw this role. I was like, oh, this might be a good opportunity to kind of learn some different different parts of computing because my computing course was an umbrella of, of different topics. So you had your databases, your networking, you had your um, software development and then you had your web development too. So That's loads good. of different stuff. And I just touched in in web development because I really enjoyed that. But I was like, oh, let me try out so, like a different role. Mm. So I did that for about six months. And I was like, oh, I kind of miss coding. <laughs> um, kind of miss coding yeah. a bit. And that's when I quite, kind of got involved with the community. So started up, uh, restarted up Leeds Front End with Naomi. And, um, Good for you. Yeah. And then became a Code First Girls instructor. That was fab. Mm. Um, and just some other bits and bobs. So I went... I kind of jumped back into a, a how did you find that then because i remember obviously we sponsor leads front end meetup yeah and you and naomi are fantastic you do such a great job but i remember when you were first starting things up and it it, it didn't come naturally did it to put yourselves in front of everyone and and command the room and there were a lot of like <laughs> older devs were turning up to your event oh, how yeah. was that it was a learning curve definitely we had no idea what we were doing um and we were really lucky to um, basically be mentored by uh, Luke. He okay. runs uh, Leeds JS Meetup. Mm -hmm. So he was absolutely fantastic. He gave us loads of advice. He really supported us. He came to our events. And we really just wanted to kind of be a little bit different. So in just, just the small things. So you know how it's very traditional to have like pizza and beer mm -hmm. at a meetup we decided we wanted a really healthy spread um we yeah, also... you guys put on a good spread i've been <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was really good <laughs> and mm -hmm. um we also decided like the venue was really important to us so we didn't want to be in a, a pub um or any any place which is like not a neutral place for all cultures um you wanted to be really inclusive yeah absolutely it was really important to us to do that um, and it's it's also been really important to us <clears throat> that we we haven't done a meetup since COVID because we don't want to do another virtual meetup. Mm -hmm. There are so many fab meetups and events online at the moment. Like you you do so many event awesome events. <clears throat> Kavea do so many awesome events. There's loads of meetups, and we didn't want to just be another one. Um, mm -hmm. And we really preferred to be people people, so in person. It is tough. It's not the same as it was. I mean, it's just, it's just different, isn't it? And it's allowing, it's hard. It, it means you gain access to a bit, a wider audience. You can get different people attend that wouldn't normally attend, but that but is, yeah, it's, yeah. Not same, it's not the same as doing it in person. But then yeah. also actually perhaps people who might not feel comfortable coming to your event, it's always quite intimidating, isn't it? I think it and is, yeah. intimidating. I mean, yours, I think, as soon as you arrive, you see you and Naomi and you both look so sweet, but you kind of like, they are a bit intimidating getting there and putting yourself through it. So I think that is a good thing about webinar because people can log on, turn their camera off. If they want to chat, they can chat. If they don't, yeah. they don't. And, yeah. and that's fine. I think for us, it was, for the meetup, for Leeds Front End, it was really important that we were in person. But since COVID, I do think it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity but mm. to get the audience, to get talking to people who you've never talked before and to break down those barriers and talk to people you've, you you can't meet face to face. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Mm. So we were just like, we don't want to be an, just another one, but yeah. we will direct you to the awesome, you know, the awesome meetups if you want, if you, if you want to do that, because obviously 
there is there is times in need where you know you've got an evening free and yeah you might have been looking at your screen all day but some people don't it's not all developers or techie people that come to the meetups yeah yeah, yeah. So, tell me about tech ray then tell me about your blog so techie ray okay my blog <laughs> i started this um oh god maybe a year ago i don't, I don't know yeah okay. i basically called it techie ray because i was looking for a twitter handle and um that was fairly recent because I was like, oh, there's a massive community on Twitter. Let me jump on there. I You're to good like on Twitter. I don't get, I, I think I'm too old for it. Nah, I just don't. I don't know what's going on. I can't keep up. <laughs> it goes so quickly. <laughs> but there is a massive, the massive tech community on Twitter all over the world. Um, um, and I was like, oh, I need a techie. I want a techie related uh, handle. And, uh, you know, when you try all the different ones and you just can't get anywhere, you're like, oh, this is taken. Oh, this is taken. So I was like, oh, techie race, screw it. I love this. Bit cheesy, but who cares? I'm fine with that. So I was like, oh well, I might as well name my blog Techie Ray. Um, mm. So I, I, it's it's tough blogging, you know, keeping up with it. Um, but how often do you release content? It's not a regular thing. It's more of a this Ad-hoc. is yeah, this is my when place to blow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of what it is, and that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, if anyone anyone reads it, that sure they're happy with that that's fine <laughs> I've had no messages like please blog more <laughs> that's okay um but yeah it's kind of like an output you know when you're on maybe Instagram Twitter LinkedIn things get lost so quickly in your feed it's nice to have just a place your own little place little hub of who you are and what you're doing you raise home yeah <laughs> instead of like a portfolio which is more like a CV thing um which I used yeah. to have but I kind of got rid of it I was like oh well you know, I can do it. I've been working the jobs. You put much on like <laughs> GitHub and Stack Overflow as well. Do you spend much time on that? Um, I don't not well. I do on GitHub um and, and and stuff like that. Especially for work, we do that daily. You know, but um not Stack Overflow because it's really intimidating on Stack Overflow. So what <laughs> Naomi did was she started a community called Junior Hub, and we ha- we have this like three hundred developers across the UK. Um, it's just like a Slack community where people can talk and it's like, there's no stupid questions. Everyone's That's such like, a good idea. Yeah, it's just, it's it's great um, because it's just a safe space for juniors. And we do have seniors and mids on there. Um, to kind of be like, I know this sounds a really stupid question in my head, but can I ask it? And it's like, well, actually it's not. It's okay. You can ask it. It's safe. You can actually <laughs> advise rather than be judged or felt like you're being judged, which is really important. Yeah, That's- really, a really interesting fact about Stack Overflow is that developer I can't remember I found this so source unknown but um developers have found if they put their name as a female name um they are less likely to get kind of hate for the questions and I was really sh- shocked uh like it's kind of disgusting like yeah. people have to refer to a gender to get less hate that's horrible less hate, like hate. yeah, yeah it's awful. It's, no. it's kind of that whole hate culture though it's just there's no bloody need is there it's awful yeah particularly yeah. when you're learning like we're so meant to be like encouraging the next generation that absolutely doing that it's just no need at all um so you led us up to your role then app support and that was you were doing oh, that for a while oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my sorry gosh so um yeah so you were telling us about your app support role but you kind of started dabbling back into tech then leads front end meet up code first girls and then and then I kind of jumped at the chance to get a coding job. So I went for another junior role. Um, and two months after starting that role, I got fired from it. Well, I say fired, I got let go. Fired a little bit, Whew. but I got let go. But not that? having- Letting you go? Not having enough experience. But they knew how much experience you had. They knew how much experience I had. I went into a junior role. So it kind of made me think, okay, I've just done a college course. I've just done a university course. I went in an entry level role. If I can't have enough experience to do that, what do I do next in order to get it? That must have been another huge knockback for you. It really was. It was a massive knockback because I've never really encountered that before. I've never had that before. It was very humbling. And I do think, like I'm actually really thankful it happened those two months, I, I wasn't happy at all at the place, you know, it just, it wasn't right for me, it wasn't, clearly wasn't right for them, it just didn't, I think so, we didn't, mm-hmm. we didn't mesh, and that was okay, I kind I was 
at the first it was shock and I felt like I'd been punched in the face but looking back it was such a great learning experience such a great opportunity um and I understand, I'm so glad it happened if I'm honest yeah. so glad so how did you pick yourself back up after that well I spent a week just thinking like what the hell do I want to do okay what do I want to do? Um, and obviously I had access to these communities. I had access to, you know, these front end. I spoke to loads of people. I was on a panel for Junior Hub. And they were, I can't remember the exact question. They were like, oh, what experience do you have? Uh, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, well, this week I got let go. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, just being transparent. It happened like yesterday. <laughs> and everyone was like, Good oh, for you God. though. Good for you. Like ballsy that you were happy to just share that with people. And that's what it it's happened, about, yeah. right? Just that's honest. it transparency like it happens and people like I had people share with me that they'd been let go before and if they hadn't shared that with me and how they kind of got through it then maybe I would have been slower to to get through my my situation I don't know so it, I think it's really important that you have those people and have that community which I did so I was very fortunate okay. um so I spent a week thinking all right what do I want to do <clears throat> I had my community and we were talking you know we were talking about a lot lot of stuff I was like I want to work with people I spoke to um I met up with a few people like in management um Max he was fab from um Daz I was just like uh this has happened please give me guidance and he was like we'll just figure out what you want to do your strengths and weaknesses stuff like that so I was like okay I want to work with people and I want to do um JavaScript react because that's the that's the thing at the moment and it looks pretty cool if I'm honest with you um so I got in touch with transition partners <laughs> and I was like, look. I didn't pay for this, <laughs> don't worry. <we> didn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I want to work with people and do React stuff. And it was Sandra actually that was like, look, I have the role for you. The person you need to speak to is, is Mick. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to score a recruitment point. I'm saying it because I know you and obviously you guys have known me for, for a while. Um, and uh, you know this suits you this will suit you so I was like, okay okay but I, ended, I was like right I'm not going to jump again because last mm -hmm. time I did that I went to the wrong job um I'm going to go with my gut as well and um just I, I think I, it's I, hard as a as a as a techie as well to to interview because so many people sell you a load of bullshit like so I think so many companies out there when they interview developers they just tell them what they need to tell them because they're desperate for talent and it's yeah, hard yeah. to cut like cut between the lines and work out who's real and who isn't because everyone wants your skill set. Yes, yes, it is. It's a market where there's, I think, what more te more roles than there is devs. Wow, um, four times <laughs> as many roles, something like that. Four times as many roles. Makes, go, makes your job harder, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yes, it does. That's where all my grey hairs come from, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I I learned. I was like, right, I'm gonna spend some time in in the company and like my tips for anyone else i say this in my um my talk let go from let go to leadership is that go in like your job a job role can differ so much between different companies you could be doing so many different things under so many different job titles or you could be doing the same thing under multiple job titles in different places mm -hmm. it varies basically that was a very mm -hmm. confusing way around it but it varies go in speak to developer or speak to whatever role you're going into and mm. see what it's actually like on the shop floor kind of thing because if you go into an interview um you might be sat with maybe a potential manager and you may be sat with a potential hr person but they don't actually know the ins and outs of, a, of whatever role you're going for do they they, mm. they don't know the nitty-gritty details yeah. they know of them but they don't live that role day to day so that's my biggest like that's one of my biggest advice top tip. go in techie raves top tip <laughs> go in have half a day or whatever yeah the actual people who roll whose role you're going to be doing if, if that's possible so you get a real flavor really. of it yeah definitely i love that and now you've loved your role which is amazing and that's where you are bring you up to date for where you are today yeah i just want to thank you i was just thinking then like how <laughs> great it was that you just like mentioned about being let go and talked about that because Plenty of people would just scratch that off their CV and pretend it never happened. Yeah. So well done for you. Love that. And thanks for being so honest with us. So challenges faced along that journey as a woman in tech. What have you faced? What have you found challenging? What's been tough? 
Um, I think college and university was tough because, it, as we, as I mentioned, I was one of the uh, like a bunch of girls um, mm -hmm. on the courses, and that's the environment matters. It really matters. Like you, your learning environment, it, you need that support. It's it's a tough tough place to be. I think. Um, and also the getting fired, that was a big challenge. <laughs> but it's not just a uh, woman specific at all, especially nowadays, like in COVID times, there's loads of redundancies and people getting let go left, right and center. It's horrible. It, it's a really tough place to be. Um, yeah. But that's definitely a couple of my biggest challenges. Yeah, well, you've done well to come out the other side and still smiling. You're very thick skinned as well, which I love. So challenges faced by the next generation and what can we come to overdo the challenge? <clears throat> I mean, you're right there on the front line with all these young people. So you probably know more than anyone what's going on and what challenges they're facing. So I'd love to know a little bit more about that. Um, I still think women in tech is a massive issue. I mean, we all know women in tech is still a massive issue. There isn't enough women, gender neutral people in tech. It's very male dominant. And it, unfortunately, like since I've come out of university and college, it's still a thing. And why is it a thing? I don't know. We need to provide more environments of support for young girls and gender neutral people to come up and rise out of the tech ashes because this is just <laughs> such a big a big thing um, yeah. so as a tech advocate which I call myself because I very much am trying to get everyone into tech just to ask my you. brothers <laughs> they're sick of me saying it <laughs> um, I'm into tech well there's so many different opportunities for different skill sets there really is you know that's the problem it. when did you oh, also interesting question I'm going off piece but when did you find out how many different opportunities they were there were within tech rather than just roles as developer what what um, level do you know when you found that out probably like six months ago <laughs> no joke no joke Seriously. I know that's what I'm talking about you've been in tech for years you went you did your BTEC you went to university you came out the other side you'd had yeah. two jobs yeah. three jobs since then and only now do you realize how much opportunity how the hell are we meant to tell young people that you don't have to be able to just code to get into tech if, 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 if you've only just found out for Christ's sake and you're techie ray <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're so right like um so with the apprentices we did a project where we went into a school and for year sevens we did this agile workshop with them. So we had these Lego robots, which you coded. It was like, it was drag and drop. So it wasn't like strict code or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, but they moved. And what we did was we split these year seven. So the whole of the year into like groups of, uh, I think it was five. So we had a little product owner, I say little, but you know I mean? Version, little role. They version. live in a little one. <laughs> <laughs> They're only young though, bless them. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a product owner, a scrum master, a developer, um, a, like a, a designer, I think we might have, oh, and a tester. That's so cool. And we were the stakeholders as Kaveya and as the teachers. Um, and we, well, the product owners had to come to us and be like, oh, what do you want next? And like, we want the robots to do a figure of eight. So they would go back to the team, talk to the scrum master, and be like, oh my God, do this. I love this. It's so cute. Uh, well, these robots took three hours to build per robot. So we didn't let the kids do that because that would have just taken uh, like a crazy amount of time. But they, the designers finished off bits, the accessories. So they had little golf clubs for these robots. Um, they had different like other different accessories. And then the, the the coder would code it. And then the tester had the great job. They would see if this uh, this figure of, like did a figure of eight. So we had loads mm -hmm. of different um, tasks for them. So figure eight was just one. Uh, and they absolutely loved it. And it was just a, such a practical way and a hands-on yeah. experience for them to yeah. learn. Actually, you don't just need to be a coder if you think about tech. Mm. There's at least five roles there like you can explore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's so much more to that just really makes things bring to bring things to life than just coding, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So what what other challenges do you think can and that we face that we can help overcome? Um <clears throat> well it has been long-standing that you need a, a degree to do tech stuff and yeah. that is the biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard I know some absolutely fantastic developers yeah. and other tech people who haven't got a degree and yeah. you know they're they're just fantastic I can't even sing their praises high enough they are so good um so there's a bit of a what is it a stigma around that but I think that's kind of dying off now but it's it's still there it's still a oh, degree required um luckily when I had experience doing uh, interviewing people at Kaveya, 
um, like I was interviewing junior developers with um, the manager, the managers, and we were like, "How much do you want to learn? Like, do you really just do you want to learn stuff?" Kind of thing. Yes, they do. Okay, you're perfect for the role because that's that's the most important thing. You know, <laughs> are you passionate about this, or opposed to have you just come out of university? No, yeah. you don't say that. You know what I mean? It's just. Um, there's a lot of boot camps now, which is fantastic, which I think are brilliant. If people choose to go to a boot camp, especially like an adult person who has stuff to pay for, um, or anyone who has stuff to pay for, maybe leaving a job or reducing hours to go to a boot camp, that commitment is incredible because these yeah, boot camps really- are like eight, eight weeks long or something crazy like that. And some of them are really expensive as well. So like yeah. you're really like committed to making the change and it's it, yeah they are fantastic and they're a really great way to to get into tech it's, it is a problem actually with covid like one of the biggest challenges um the last time we went into a recession was was that the first jobs to go were graduate and apprenticeships no one oh, takes God. on juniors because it's the first thing no one's got time because everyone's fighting mm-hmm. fires <clears throat> it's really important that as a tech community tech ecosystem that we keep these opportunities coming for the next generation otherwise you'll find out in two years there's no kind of like junior to mid-level like that that junior step's gone because we're not feeding the talent that you've constantly got to do. So it's really important that we take an active position on that. So I'd love to hear then um, your greatest achievement to date. I was thinking about this. I was like, proudest oh, moment. Proudest moment. I, I honestly think it's managing the apprentices in terms of grads. I am so proud of them. I am so I just can't even believe it. They're just fantastic. Like, it's not even just them being fantastic. It's the fact that I have had this opportunity and um, I've really stepped up in my maturity <laughs> and my <laughs> um, <laughs> general thought processes and leadership. It's the, yeah. I think that's just incredible. Like, they gave me an incredible opportunity to manage people um, because I said I really wanted to do this. I was really passionate about it. I think I could do it please let me do it and they did and I've had so many so much good feedback from other people like oh you've really brought people out of out of the shell and you know you've really supported them and things like that it's just like yes we did it we're doing it <laughs> that there is got to be my greatest achievement yeah <laughs> I love that and it's nice that someone gave you the opportunity to do that because that's half of it right is that opportunity for people and give allowing people to have that opportunity is really important so and now you've experienced that once you're now that's going to be the biggest thing in your career you're going to be spotting for little opportunities or little nuggets that you can give people to to help their career to step up because someone did that for you you never forget that and that as a manager and a leader for you is going to be one of your biggest selling points moving on in your career and that's why you'll be CTO by the time you're 35 is because you're (laughs) sort of person that gives people opportunities because someone gave you that opportunity and it's awesome who's so um, right, yeah. Who's, yeah yeah cto 35 definitely i'll be helping you there don't worry um <laughs> who's your greatest role model i found this really difficult because i have a bunch of great role models okay, um, tell me. so professionally i've got to say i think like she doesn't know that I'm going to say this, but Gail Parker. Do you know Gail? Gail's cool. Yeah, I've she met is. Gail. She's lovely. She's fearless. She's mm-hmm. energetic. She's super motivated. She's just brill. And like, I think she's just awesome, if I'm honest with you. She packs a punch when she comes in the room, doesn't she, Gail? Like, she's got a real energy about her. She has such energy. Yeah, absolutely. And I just find it so inspiring <laughs> and I haven't I had a bit of a bit of time where I was I was mentored a little bit by by Gail and it wasn't too many times that we spoke but when we did it was just like so like the information she gave the advice that she gave the listening the quick turnaround when I have a problem it's just it was just fantastic it was just unbelievable and I was like I think you're fab I do <laughs> well done Gail there we yeah. go you don't get a better, better review than that do you who else who else who else inspires you um I don't know if this sounds a bit weird but my partner he is just so hard working and he's just fantastic like he's such level-headed hard-working person and yeah I've just got he's to say he's to be a lawyer did you say no he is a, he is a lawyer yeah he's a lawyer and uh, I think it comes with a job that you've got to be like really good with stress you've got to be calm in situations yeah. you've got to be 
good at talking, good at words in general, something that I'm not particularly great at. <laughs> but been all right on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just gabbing away though, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know how long it's been either. Gosh. So sorry about that. <laughs> but I've got to say he's he's my role model. Like neither of these people know that I would even say this. So so nice. <laughs> yeah, good. I like it it's important to have that and to be surrounded by that energy is really important because that helps fire you up right definitely yeah so I'd love to know your words of wisdom and what would you tell your younger self what do you tell your apprentices oh gosh um don't be afraid to fail so I'm giving a talk for the stem next week so mm-hmm. these girls I think they're around like uh, 11, 11 to 15 years old and the, the whole talk is called um, Conquering the Fear of Failure. So mm. I just, it's only taken me till now to kind of be like, don't be afraid to fail because this whole time I've been like, what if I fail? What if it goes wrong? What about this? What if that? And overthinking everything. And I've mm. actually just just thought like, it's okay, failure, embrace it. Like ever since I got let go from a role, that's when I was like, failure is good because look at what good came from it. Yeah. so it's really important you've got to fail to learn um and I think obviously providing that environment for your apprentices and grads and interns that it's okay to fail lets them grow even more so that's one of my um words of advice I have another one you t- well. once you do fail they're kind of like tools to your belt aren't they but like yeah it's all yeah. like it's all like having your brownie stickers on your <laughs> do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean it's a bit like that isn't it collecting your collecting your stickers because that's that's what it's all about yeah it's like what have I learned from that and, and how do I go forward and it's just at the time it's sometimes not very really nice you know it's tough but you do come out stronger and I know it's a bit cliche to say and I hate being cliche but it, def- it definitely is true <laughs> good good so that's one of them you said you got another one what's your other yeah. top tip so my second one is uh be uh unap- unapologetically be yourself so there's no one else like you be yourself and again it's the same I the whole time like I must fit in I must do this I must I have got this thing on my head where I need to be this person so do it well just no you just being a copycat or you're just going along with the whatever you need to be yourself you need to stick out stand out and be okay with that it's really important that you're okay with that because I wasn't okay with that for a while I was like I need to do this this and this Mm. I need to be this person but you can only be the best version of yourself. And if you turn up and you do that and you try your hardest and you're a good person, you've got a good heart, then that's the most important thing is. Absolutely. It? That's what, yeah, that's what I've definitely learned is like, be yourself, do your best, be a good person to other people. That's the best version of anything anyone can be. And that's why part of the reason you've got such a good network and that people speak so highly of you every time they do is because you are always happy to give your time to other people and help others. And if you can add positive input, you will. And that's just awesome. So thank you for that. Mm. Thank you so much for coming on my podcast. I'm so glad we finally got it booked in and I got to answer to Thank you so much for having me. I've absolutely, like, I've loved it to bits. I don't even know how long I've been yapping on for. So I apologize if it's so long. (laughs) But, um, if people want to get in touch do they techie ray what's the best form of contact uh twitter is techie ray um my blog's techie ray and my linkedin is rachel scallon so feel free to okay. contact on follow anyone. rachel she's an <laughs> awesome girl doing some really cool things that you certainly want to watch for the future so um it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast thank you so much everyone for listening in and um, so Jenny of a Women in Tech, I've had a fantastic afternoon with the lovely Rachel Skelton and we hope you've enjoyed the show. See you later.